Hi, I'm Brooklyn. I'm with Block Party Quilt Co. And today I'm going to show you one of my favorite things I've ever worked on. So this is a minky blanket. It's super soft and flush. And all of these bright colors are not only just like bright, fun colors. They are all different objects. So if you are familiar with quilting, you may know about fussy cutting. It's when you take like a fabric and you cut out a certain picture in it. And I love doing that, but collecting the fabric for that takes forever. If you're gonna make a big blanket, that takes like <laughs> literally years sometimes. So I designed this as a panel that we can use to make the fun quilting. And one of the best parts about it is that everything that's in it is written down on this outside edge. So if you're sitting down and playing with someone looking for the pieces, you can say, all right, let's buy a submarine. Here's the word for the submarine. And you can look at it together and find there's the submarine right here. So you can see that it's like a really fun blanket. It's not only like super plush and comfy, it's also like a game. And it was inspired by an I Spy blanket that I made for my friend's kids. And her kids loved it so much that they had to build a schedule of which kid got to sleep with it on which night. And we decided to, to make this so it's more accessible to everyone to make an I Spy blanket. On this, it's quilted, but here you can see what it looks like when it's just the panel. And the fun part of this is you can either make a blanket, like I showed you. Um, the technique on that is really simple. We just put this together with a piece of backing. We sell it with a backing piece that's this exact same blue color, so that when you wrap the binding around, it, it matches perfectly. You can also take this panel and cut it and make other things. So let's set this one aside. I love making these little blocks. So I just took six squares out of the panel and I sewed them together. I added some little trims and fun things in there because I made this for my kids and they really love the like texture of, of these different things. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a soft book out of part of this panel. My panel that I've been working from has been chopped up a little bit. And that's kind of what's fun is I pick out pieces that I really love that I want to use for this and then the rest can be saved for other projects later. So let's get started and I'll show you how we're going to make this off book. So this is how we're going to make some of these pages. I have cut out eight blocks. It needs to be in a continuous block so that you don't have any of the seam allowances. That also reduces some of the bulk. So you just pick out a section of eight and then we're going to sew two of them together. So I'm lining up the pieces with the tops together. So we're putting them right sides together. This is the top, you know, they're both going the same direction. And then I'm gonna go around and carefully pin this in place so that they're in the same spot when I'm sewing it around. So a lot of the time people are afraid of working with Minky because of a few, a few different things. One, it's slippery, which can make it kind of tricky to sew with, but if you're sewing it right sides together like this, it actually holds itself in place pretty well. Another issue that people have sometimes is that it stretches. This is something that I really considered as we were printing it. It doesn't have a lot of stretch. It feels pretty much like quilter's cotton. So if you're wanting to try to work with Minky, this is a good place to start. The last thing that people kind of complain about that I've definitely noticed too is that it can be messy. So when you cut a piece of minky, you're loosening up all the fibers around the edge and they kind of just peel off and float away, which is kind of annoying. And when you're done working with it, all you have to do is vacuum it up and it goes away. There's also some tricks on working with like larger pieces. You can take them outside and shake them off or you can even pop them into your dryer and let it just go on like an air tumble cycle for a few minutes. I don't recommend that one as much because the lint's kind of fine and it can get into your dryer, but if you're only doing it every now and then it's not a big deal. So now that I have this all pinned, I'm going to just go around the edge with a scant quarter inch seam allowance, sew it. I'm going to leave a gap right here so that I can turn this right side out. So when you're sewing this, it's best to leave a gap that's about the size of your hand so that it's easy to reach in and turn this right side out. And I'm just pulling my fingers in and kind of going along the seam, but I'm also pushing out the corners. It doesn't have to be super sharp because this is just a soft book. It doesn't have to fit anybody or anything like that. So now I'm gonna go around the outside edge and just add a little top stitch. 
You don't have to add the top stitch, but since we are going to be sewing this edge in anyways, it, we might as well. So on this part that you have the opening, just do a little fold on both pieces, line them up together, and when you pull that tight, they should both stay folded. And if you want to, you can pin them, and that'll make sure that they stay where you want them to be. So I'll take this to my sh machine and just do a top stitcher on the outside edge with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And as I'm going, I'm also kind of grabbing this seam and I roll it between my fingers to make sure that, that edge is as far out as it can be. So as I was going around, I have this little spot that I missed picking up in my seam. So to fix it, you can either unpick this little section or you can just fold it over and sew again over the top. Pulling out a seam is kind of tricky and minky because it's hard to see the thread. So I'm just gonna go over the top and sew it in place. Then the last thing we're gonna do for this page set is sew one line down the center of the blocks. So you can go over all of the lines and quilt it. There's no batting in between this, so the quilting isn't super noticeable. But when we sew this line down the center, it's gonna be easier to line up the rest of our pages. Then once that line is sewn, we're gonna trim off our threads. And now I'm gonna show you how to make the binding, which can be kind of tricky, but if you follow along, you should be able to do it with no problem. So I have a strip of Minky cut to the same size as the pages with an extra inch. So there's a half inch on the top and bottom. This piece came from a scrap that I had, but you can use it from the selvage or some of the other blocks that you have in the blanket that you're not using for this. It can be anything that, um, that you wanna use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fold in one side by just about a half inch, a half to a quarter inch. And I've cut this to four inches wide and then the length of the, the blocks, which turned out to be about 11 inches with the extra inch. And so I'm folding in one side by a half inch and I'm gonna sew that in place. And once the lint is knocked off of Minky, it won't fray anymore. So the initial piece has like all these little lints, but it won't fray. And so you don't have to worry about doing like a securing stitch, like a zigzag or anything like that. I'm just doing a straight stitch on all of this. So after you sew on that long edge, you're also gonna fold down the top and bottom and make sure that they're the same length as your pages. If they're a little tiny bit bigger, that's okay. And this is how we're gonna attach the pages. So on that line that we sewed before, we are gonna use that as the guide to kind of pin this in place. And we're only, right now, we only have sewed on this one edge because we're not sure yet exactly how big of a binding we're gonna need. I'm just using a three page book but if you're doing more, you're gonna need more fabric for the binding. So don't finish the edge quite yet. And then once that's pinned, I'm gonna open it up and just sew again down that line so that I have it now attached to the binding. And at this point, the fabric's getting a little thick. Right now I'm sewing through one, two, three, four layers of Mickey. So if you're starting to feel some of that, just make sure you go slow. Set your stitch length to a little bit longer and that'll help. Okay, now our first page is attached to the binding. So whatever you do on this one is gonna be the front cover of your book. So pick your favorite for this part and then we're gonna start being able to open it up and really play with this. So after you've sewed on your first page, this outside one, this first one that you do is gonna be the outside cover. So make sure that one's your favorite. And then as you open it up, the pages that will be next to each other, um, you can see that as you're going. So I have a dark piece right here and just for the variety, I want to have a light piece next to it. So I'm taking my next page set and I'm taking that line that we sewed and placing it right next to that page that we already placed. So I'm pinning down on that sewn line immediately next to that first page. And then I'm gonna go down that same line and we're gonna just repeat this until we have all of our pages put in place. So this is how it looks when you've added three page sets. 
you can open it and play with it. It's really fun. When you're going in between, you're gonna find that you have some of the blue showing through from the back. And that's fine, that's why we use the minky that matches. And the more you practice, the smaller you'll be able to get those gaps. If you really don't want a gap there, you can always do a zigzag stitch down that line and that'll keep your gap from being noticeable. So if you are done with your page sets, it's time to finish off this back binding. So I'm not even using a rotary cutter, I'm just using some nice sharp scissors. So I'm gonna cut leaving about a half inch on the outside edge. And then we're gonna just carefully fold that in so that the raw edge of the minky is touching that next page. And now that I have that all done, I'm just gonna do a straight stitch down that line. So now that I'm done with that last seam, I have my whole soft book done. And I used contrasting thread on the binding, and so you can see all of the little lines, but if you wanna use the matching thread, then you won't see all of those lines. And you can also come in here by hand if you don't like the feel of having the overhanging binding. Come in by hand and sew that down in place. It is unlikely that you'll be able to fit an inch thick of fabric underneath most machines, so that's why you have to do it by hand. If you are, use a thimble and that'll make it a little bit easier for you. So now we are all done with the soft book and that is an easy way to use the Hidden Pictures Minky panel. Okay, so now I'm all done with my soft book. I think my kids are gonna love this and it's pretty sturdy, so I'm hoping it's indestructible. If you wanted this binding to feel a little bit stronger, you can come in by hand and sew that down in place. Um, it's unlikely that most machines are gonna be able to sew through that thick of fabric. So you need to do that by hand, but this is just another fun project that you can do from our Hidden Pictures Minky panel. I am totally in love with this, and it's not just because I made it. I think it's such an awesome way to get all these different fun things. It's a great gift. I mean, kids love it. It's soft. It's good for grown-ups and little kids. So make sure you go and grab your panel. It's only available from us right now, and if you would like to see it in your local quilt shops, make sure to let them know. Send them this video so that they can start carrying it too.